G'day folks. Well, I was recently asked how to wire up a starting torque limiter and whether or not the Danfoss ones would be up to the task of running an air compressor. So I just thought I'd do a tutorial on how to, how to hook up a starting torque limiter to a single phase motor. Uh, these work on both single or three phase power, 240 up to 415 or even 500 volts. Uh, it's all de detailed on the uh, torque limiters instruction manual and even on Dan Foster's website. It's the best way to research them before buying. Uh, this particular YouTube user, I can't remember his name, but he's thinking of buying a starting torque limiter from Dan Foss. So I just thought that I'd do this video to show how to use their product and what it's capable of. Now unlike some other soft starters and other limiters and torque control devices, you don't have to worry about the capacitors on these motors. I've never had a problem hooking them up just straight to the motor without having to integrate capacitors into the torque limiter. There's no mention of it on the instructions and no provision for it. So, to play along at home you'll need a single phase motor of the appropriate rating for the torque limiter. Like this one's a one and a half horsepower Leeson. I've tested it before and it's just fine. It's capacitor start and capacitor run. So it sort of covers both fields. I haven't tried on a torque limiter yet so it's not to say it might not work but in all theory it should. You will need a Danfoss starting torque limiter TCL25 or TCL15. These are panel mount, they use a standard DIN rail or you can screw them to the panel itself. Best way to mount them is vertical so that the heat is drawn off the fins through convection. Mounting them horizontally is possible but you halve your duty cycle. You can only do so many starts per hour before they start overheating. Uh, you also need a contactor. I'm using a Danfoss CL9. Uh, you don't have to use a Danfoss contactor. Any kind of three phase contactor will do. You need a mains power switch just in case. You don't have to have a mains power switch. I'm just using that as an isolator. Obviously a power supply, a power lead and a variety of tools. Wire cutters, extra wire, uh, I'm going to need a couple of extra wires to go between the switch and the contactor, but that's about it. And your application will dictate what wiring you need. You'll uh, obviously have wiring going from the starting torque limiter to the motor. You'll have your mains cable going to your contactor or isolating switch. You can use either or, or just depending on how your machinery cabinet's set up. As long as you have the starting torque limiter before the motor, motor goes to the starting torque limiter then you have your supply. You don't worry about the caps and you don't worry about switching across here. Although you can switch the live phase L1 I don't recommend it. It can be done but you still leave things open to electrocution if you think it's isolated and you've only isolated one of the two two active wires. So you'll find on some houses and systems as I found here, when I first moved into this property, the phases are swapped around. So, neutral was active, and active was neutral. Every time I thought I had the power off, it turned out I didn't, and I actually copped a good jolt from it one day. So I'm sort of lucky to be alive because of that. Always check your power polarity, make sure it's all right. And if in doubt, get a qualified person to do it. Okay, well now it's time to put this little jigsaw puzzle together. I've got starting torque limiter, contactor, I'm not going to use the main manual switch. Uh, you can substitute a contactor for one of these and just run straight to the uh, torque limiter and to the motor. Uh, it's basically the same as I'm going to hook it up except with the contactor you need a normally open and normally closed switch to energise and de-energise the coil as your start and stop buttons. It'll just be a momentary push button, which is quite cool for a piece of machinery. But this is just your basic home machinery stuff, particularly single phase. Three phase, you usually have a start-stop station with a contactor. So what I'm going to do is start with the mains lead. This is all wiring for 240 volt, 50 hertz Australian wiring, not uh, US 120 or 220 or two-phase wiring like some people seem to have. 
I notice uh, some people have two live phases and an optional neutral. Um, obviously normal three phases, three phases plus an optional neutral. And Australian voltage is one live wire, which is the brown on your normal lead. Brown, red, or I think sometimes white. No, not white. It's usually brown or red, and your uh, neutral is either blue or black. Green's obviously earth, wherever you are. And earth doesn't go through the contactor either. Everything should be permanently earthed. So you look at the contactor and find out you've got L1, 2 and 3 which is your inputs and then you've got your motor outputs. Uh, these are your coil contact or coil terminals. That's where you wire your normally open and normally closed switch circuit through. Uh, but I'm just going to wire up to L1 is your live wire. I'm really not sure how to do it with two phase power or US power. And for this starting torque limiter you have to run through L1 and L3 not L2. You ignore L2 on single phasing. So L3 is neutral. Yeah. The motor, I'm going to have to make up a little earth lead for it, but I'm going to go another live out. T1 is your motor output. And T3 is also motor output, that's your neutral. Not the best screwdriver for the job, but it's working. The earth soul wire up separately. Now torque limiter, you'll notice there's your inputs, L1, 2 and 3. T1, 2 and 3 are the motor outputs. There are also some controls here for a remote control station or for wiring into a Danfoss PLC. I'm not sure if these are compatible with other PLCs, but I know the Danfoss PLCs will work with them. So we line that up. Normally these would be rail mounted. And we go L1 is live. Nice and tight. And L3 is neutral. So that's wired in like so. Disregard capacitors on the motor, they don't have to be wired through these apparently. There's no provision for it in the instructions and everything. But they do list all the important stuff like current load. These are rated up to 25 amps, which is the TCL25. TCL15 is obviously 15 amps. But you'll get this all in the box when you buy it from Danfoss. Next step is the motor, which is T1 live. Of course, make sure all your connections are good and tight. You've got fresh copper conductors. Don't use aluminum core wire. I think it's illegal in most parts of the world and for a good reason. Because aluminum wire joints have a habit of getting oxide build up on them and subsequent heat cause them to come loose and start fires. So aluminum core cabling, which was used in the US for quite a while, is understandably illegal now. I've seen it occur, appear a couple of times in Australia but it's usually illegal or illegally installed this thing here, I don't have any wire nuts I think wire nuts are actually illegal in Australia 